pride. And that's one thing about karmic relationships too. Like I said, as they are destructive, they too can be quite reformative because she was one of those people that believed in being brutally honest. And one thing about honesty, it's not brutal. Honesty is honesty, plain and simple. She never had to question my beliefs in her. She never had to question how much I respected her, how much I valued her. She never had to, I don't, I would never give her a reason to question me. I was so loyal. Like that's my Venus. My Venus is in Leo. Like, I'm loyal. Like, once I'm down, we riding. But uh, with good reason, okay? Because once it gets bumpy, I'm like, whoa, whoa. This ain't no Queen Slim, boo. So, I decided to do my character analysis in accordance to the seven deadly sins and virtues. And essentially, I decided to do it as such because... I enabled Leo's sins through virtues and it's not to suggest that I'm without accountability because as a protagonist and as an antagonist you both share accountability for the conflict that you are within maybe 50 50 maybe 60 40 maybe 80 20 there is an accountability to be assumed on both behalf so I'm not suggesting like oh because this is my perspective and my story like I'm the protagonist protagonist if I was the antagonist I'll let you know but honestly like when I explain it further identifiably so I would be seen as the protagonist as often in conflict there's going to be a protagonist and or antagonist so you know Leo was the antagonist I was the protagonist but I was not without blame because my virtues afforded her sins so getting to the point I'm just going to be reading it as written and firstly, I said, Leo was really greedy. She was very generous, especially with like monetary um, aspects of finance or just uh, superficial items like materialism. Like she was very generous. She was never envious, if not rarely. So I, I never really saw her be envious, but obviously that's probably like a natural response for some humans. So she could have been envious at one point in her life, but I never saw that. Um, gluttony was never an issue of hers. She was not addicted to anything. That's kind of how I refer to gluttony when you have addictions like to substance, alcohol, food. Like she didn't really have any suffrage with gluttony. Yet wrath was a real big thing for her. She was very impatient and at times she could be quite insensitive. She had a really bad temper on her. And um, it reminded me of an adolescent disposition that's what I wrote because at times when a child has an attitude they don't really care about what they're saying or rather they don't really acknowledge what they're saying they simply acknowledge how they feel even if they don't know what it is they're feeling so at times like a child when they throw a temper tantrum you're just gonna do anything you're gonna say anything and you're not really gonna think about the consequence because you don't have that emotional regulation. And that's what I felt like was lacked on the behalf of Leo, just that emotional regulation. If she felt like somebody was coming for her, if she felt like people were not doing their due diligence, she would become really impatient and she would, you know, be a bit temperamental. And I would often bestow virtue to this aspect of sin by just being accommodating you know what I you know what I mean like I never did anything to anger her intentionally I was always understanding when she was going through her moment of moments of adversity with other people so say somebody pissed her off I'm gonna sit there and give you my quality time and listen to you and I too will provide an act of service and try to you know mediate that conflict if I possibly can so um you know that's kind of how I dealt with that disposition but she was one of those people that believed in being brutally honest and one thing about honesty it's not brutal honesty is honesty plain and simple and that's what I'm referring to when I refer to her wrath she could just be very insensitive it's like you come from me it's over and that's not a good mentality to have all the time now whatever another aspect of sin that Leo yielded was pride and that's one thing about karmic relationships too like I said, as they are destructive, they too can be quite reformative because I can be very stubborn as well. So being in a relationship with Leo was like almost being in a relationship with myself. The only difference was like, if not possessed by myself or rather demonstrated by myself, she possessed it and demonstrated it to show me like, you possess this capability and or potential, so be careful or you have possessed this capability and potential and you have demonstrated it unto others, 
and you need to watch out because now you see how it feels. You know what I mean? Like it was almost like getting the karma back to myself for being stubborn at times or showing me how far I could go with my stubbornness, although I've never been as far as, as you know, she would take it. So like I'm saying, or like I was saying, you know, getting back to the point, very prideful, very stubborn. You would think she was a Taurus. But anyways, um, she lacked a lot of accountability, thus lacking empathy, furthermore lacking perspective. She was one of those people where you literally have to go through it yourself in order for you to understand what somebody else is going through, which is sympathy, rather than just being like, this looks like a terrible situation. Let me give them empathy. I don't know what you're going through, but wow, that that's tough you know what I mean like I used to think everybody was intrinsically empathetic but upon meeting her it was like no like some people may not possess it possess it or they just may be unyielding to it but she was not empathetic thus lacking accountability thus lacking perspective so I would come in with my virtue by compensating you know a lot of things that she would be prideful of so for example I would frequently apologize I would constantly explain myself further so I wouldn't be in, you know, dismay with her for a lack of better word or phrasing. And um, often I would initiate check-ins. You know, I would initiate a lot of the conversations toward the towards the end of our relationship. And even within the beginning and middle of our relationship, you know, a lot of times I was doing the mental check-ins, the spiritual check-ins. You know, I was just checking in on their well-being. I always did that. I was just reliable. I was dependable. I was literally that person. And that was my mantra for a while. I would find a way or make a way. So say I was in Georgia and I needed to get back to Florida because my friend called me and said, hey, like, I know you're out in Georgia, but I wanted to know if you were going to be back by tomorrow morning because I'm trying to get my hair done. Can you, you know, sit with me? I'd be like, sure. You know what I mean? Like, I would get whatever I needed to get done at Georgia done. And I, too, would make sure that I made it to Florida just to be there so that they could get their hair done. You know what I mean? Like, that's the type of friend that I was. I wasn't going to drop everything and not fulfill my responsibilities. But I would, I would work excessively to be of service to my friends in the same way that I would hope they would do unto me. And then I grouped the last two sins together. So it's vanity and lust. And there's this reoccurring theme for Leo where it's just like being egotistical, being self-centered, self-righteous, like everything is about me. It's all about me. So, you know, according to Vanity and Lust, she, she could be a bit egotistical. And often I would afford her words of affirmation. I would afford her acts of service. So, you know, I would always be complimenting her, which was unreciprocated or it wasn't reciprocated to the degree at which, you know, I was giving it to her. Like I would constantly compliment her. I would always praise her. I would always just like assert my value to her non-verbally and verbally all the time. Like I always affirmed her. She never had to question my beliefs in her she never had to question how much I respected her how much I valued her she never had to I don't I would never give her a reason to question me I was so loyal like that's my Venus my Venus is in Leo like I'm loyal like once I'm down we riding but with good reason okay because once it gets bumpy I'm like whoa whoa this ain't no queen slim boo but anyways um yeah, you know, a lot of the praise was unreciprocated. And then referring to a bit of psychology, there appeared to be this slight to moderate um, adolescent egocentrism. I'm not suggesting that this is in fact her case, not to make a diagnosis, but definitely to call reference to correlation. Like there did, there did, yeah, there did, there was, <laughs> there was this um, apparent ego, ego, egocentrism is what I'm saying so you know again like I said I would demonstrate acts of service quality time words of affirmation I was always there when you call always on time gave you my all baby baby okay like I was always there period but anyways um referring to lust a little more closely I think the only time where I would identify her being a bit lusty is like you assert yourself as an alpha woman and may she be unevolved and or evolved. She definitely was an alpha woman, point blank, period. And she would surround herself with a bunch of beta males 
And like I said, I was going to get to what I meant when I said, you know, she would accept less than what she really was valued as. She had a boyfriend that, in the words of Cash Doll, was a ham-ass nigga. Like, she had a boyfriend that was just dusty. He was just not at her level. And it's not even to discuss finances, but just mentally. He did not want the same things that she wanted, but she would still entertain him. And, of course, I understand the connective bonds of love and sexual intimacy that probably kept her to him. But the value at which she often asserted within our social settings, like how she would be like, uh-uh, it's never less than the best, but you literally are in relations to the less than the best. You know, it made me question like, you know, why are you dealing with him? That's what I meant when I said, you know, a questionable self-esteem and her confidence. But also, like I said too, she would surround herself with a bunch of beta males and maybe, you know, for alpha women, they that's how they get down you know that's what they do they like to be around a lot of beta males for me I don't think this is a thing that I can be because I am a woman but who cares like I've always been a lone wolf I've always been a loner and um you know I don't really believe I'm an alpha woman but I'm definitely not a beta woman I'm just like kind of you know in my own little space I think it's like sigma or something like that but yeah you know she would definitely surround herself with like a bunch of a bunch of betas and I'm like girl you don't need to be around that. You don't. You need to be where you need to be.